Don't start telling me the truth. How am I supposed to prepare a good defense for you? I'm working blind now. I'm telling you the truth. Oh yeah, you are being totally honest with me. That's why I have two signed statements and a police officer as a witness. Care to explain these? These are all lies. That's it. I'm having your case reassigned. Defending a person whose entire testimony is a fib is an utter waste of my time and a potential embarrassment for me and my firm. It is not worth my reputation. Elsie. Elsie. Come on, Elsie. Okay, fine. I'll tell you the truth. I've got time. Can I come see? Now, you? Wilfred. Now, I need to prepare for the hearing. Let's go back to the table. You can ask me anything. I'll answer. Truthfully. You know what I need to know, so just tell me. I'm a transvestite. Yes, and I have been since I was a small kid. I'm the last born, among us five sisters. And uh, they used to dress me up as a girl when I was small. And I, it's kind of stuck. Now, now I'm, a, I'm, I'm an adult and uh, this is something I do for fun. Cross-dressing is like a hobby. Huh? Did Larry know that you were a crossdresser? Yes, Larry knew. It was, it is his fetish. So I discovered much later. Does anyone else know? No. Just Larry. And I was hoping it would remain that way. Do you know what will happen to me if, if this came out? I'd lose my job, shame my family. I'd have no face. I'd be a total ridicule. What about the police officer, Larry's friend? They don't matter. I can't admit this in court. If I do, I'm done. If you don't, you're done. The prosecution is looking at not less than five years for you. Cross-dressing has lots of connotations attached to it. You know what I mean? Wilfred! You son of a bitch! You thought you'd get away with this? Sir, you thought you'd get away with my money? Sir, please calm down. There are several ways to deal with this matter. Get out of my way! Ah! Don't press so hard. Unless you want to wind up with a huge bump on your head, keep complaining. God. You I'm such sure you that this is even effective. Can you just hush it and let me do this? 
You're such a sissy. Well, you try landing on a concrete floor. Well, it didn't kill you, so keep still. I have to be more careful. <laughs> you sure didn't see this one coming. You're so right. Well, the bump is gone. Ish. <sighs> but it's going to turn back in a few days. Damn. Okay, just um, hold on to this. Keep pressing. Mm. And try massaging it with a lot of olive oil at night. It might help with the not stackening. Hello. Yes. <clears throat> Have you been attended? I'm not here to see anyone. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm waiting to see if Elsie is okay. What happened? Ridgeman came in and pushed her. I should have protected her, but... Are you alright? A throbbing headache, a nasty bump on my head. I should have had better days. Should have that looked at. No, mm, it'll be fine. It'll turn dark in a few days. I am so looking forward to that. I met some guy at the reception with a black eye. Were the two of you together when this all took place? I should get back to work. Well, um, I was having a talk with my client, that black eyed guy at reception. And this big fool just rushes into the courtroom and. I think it's a good idea for us to talk before the trial begins. I'm sorry for shoving you the way I did. I'll survive. You're lucky I'm not suing you. All rise. In the matter of Wilfred Ramato versus the state on the charge of ob obtaining money under false pretense, are all parties present? If there is anyone in this courtroom who is involved in this case as a witness, please wait outside to be called. Prosecution. Call in your first witness. I have an opening statement, Your Honor. Well, that's okay. I've read the file. I'm familiar with the case. I don't need an introduction. An interesting case, I must say. Go on. Call in your first witness. The prosecution calls Larry Misuko. What faith do you profess? Christian. Raise your left hand on the Bible and lift up your right hand and repeat the following act after me. I swear by the Almighty God. I swear by the Almighty God that the evidence I shall give in this court. That the evidence I shall give in this court. Touching on the matters in question. Touching on the matters in question. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Mr. Larry Misuko, please tell this court how you are acquainted with uh, Wilfred Wamato. When I met Wilfred, he was winning. We met at the Home Expo last year. I thought he was attractive and very feminine. So I started a conversation which led to the exchange of numbers. We started dating and that lasted several months. And all this time you did not suspect anything? 
I thought her hands and feet were huge for a woman, but I've met women with bigger feet, so I didn't think much of it. Her voice was deeper than normal. Quite frankly, it's one thing I really liked about her, the deep voice. I thought it was very sexy. While dating, did your relationship ever get physical or intimate? Didn't go beyond second base. It was all about tender hugs and kisses. I almost threw up when I realized I had been touching and kissing a man. Did he, she, he, give any reason for not being uh, intimate? She kept on saying she was saving herself for marriage, waiting for the right man. And of course that meant avoiding situations and temptations that would make her slip. I found that quite admirable. Chastity isn't a virtue that is easy, easily found in today's girls. She stood steadfast on it. The more she held on, the deeper in love I fell. I proposed and she said yes. I was happy. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. I was on cloud 11. My heart was bursting with joy. She was the one for me, but alas, it was a man, a freak. No objection, Your Honor. He cannot refer to my client as a freak. Sustained. <clears throat> Mind your language, Mr. Misufo. Yes, Your Honor. Proceed. Can we proceed, Larry? Sure. Now, you told me that you went on holidays nearly every two months. Winnie liked Mombasa, the south coast. Took her there every time I could. And while you were at the hotels, you stayed in... Um... Separate rooms, yes. Avoiding temptation. You're a very good man. Go on. The last time we were there was during the Easter holidays. We were at the south coast, Diani. My lord, I'd like to submit the holiday receipts for the most recent one. The name Winnie clearly jotted down in one of the accommodation receipts. I'll have a look at them. And these are the photos they took while on vacation. Very well. They'll be marked as prosecution exhibits. Go on. After the Easter holidays, I grew more attached. I felt more responsible for her. That's when I started paying her rent and catering for her needs, even her upkeep. Unfortunately, I don't have a record of this because I did this mainly in cash. That's when it came to time to meet her parents, my future in-laws. Sorry, I didn't see you come in there. Oh, no offense taken. Um, my name is Tokara. Mm -hmm. I'm here for an interview. I was called by Liz. I'm Liz. Um, just have a seat and give me a few. Okay, thank you. Yes? Already. July 26th was the date set to meet her parents. It's such an important day to a man when he officially asks the hand in marriage of someone's daughter. I was so proud of myself. I wish my dad, God rest his soul, was there with me. Where was their residence? It was in Buruburu phase 5. I was welcomed by two elderly people. We had lunch and I presented my request, which was accepted. I gave her father 100,000 shillings in cash as an initial payment of dowry for appreci in appreciation and showing my commitment to their daughter. What happened next? Winnie and I set our wedding date. 
and also set the dates for the Wazes to meet and um, discuss our pending nuptials. When did you realize that it was all a sham? I didn't realize a thing. He was that good. I just stumbled upon it. On August 14th, I was conducting some business around Buruburu Shopping Center, which concluded early. So I decided to stop by her parents' place briefly. As a prospective good son-in-law, I went and did some shopping and I proceeded to the house in phase five. Did you find them? No. The people who opened the door were total strangers to me. When I inquired about the parents, they said they had never seen and never heard of those people before. It's like they just vanished. They disappeared into the thin air. I excused myself and apologized. I thought I was mistaken. So I called Winnie to confirm exactly where her parents' house was, which she did. Buruburu, phase five, house 65D, the exact house where I was. So in light of all these developments, what did you do? I was totally confused. I called my friend Peter to come to Buruburu immediately, which he did. I was totally dumbfounded, totally confused, too flabbergasted. All those words put together and multiplied couldn't even describe it. What did uh, your friend uh, Peter, how did, he has, how did he assist you? He drove me to my fake fiance's house. We found her in the house. I couldn't talk. Peter did all the talking. When we informed her that I had actually been to her parents' house, that's when she tried to run. And Peter grabbed her. In the process of the commotion, or should I call it wrestling, that's when we saw it. <laughs> we saw it. We saw it. We saw it. What did you see, Larry? What was the it? The merchandise. Just like mine. Can, can you please be more specific? How much more specific do you want me to be? She had a male sex organ. The full deal. Just like mine. I feel your pain. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Is it true that Wilfred Winnie confessed to you that she was a transvestite when you met and did so just for the fun of it? No. Am I correct to say that you encouraged her to dress up in women's clothes to satisfy her weird fetish of yours? I never made any such suggestion. Larry Misuko, are you gay? Are you a homosexual? I beg your pardon? How can you insinuate such a thing? It is a yes or no answer. I am not answering any intrusive and insulting question. Oh yes you will. You opened yourself up to such intrusion. Answer the question. Objection. She's harassing the witness. I will allow it. The witness will answer the question. You took a second to answer my question. You're being extremely defensive. So are you a homosexual? Larry Misuko. I am a respectable man. Respect has nothing to do with whether you're heterosexual or homosexual. So are you. Larry Misuko, can you get control of yourself before I find you in contempt of court? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Now, 
Do you have any more provocative questions? Your Honor, I would like an answer to my question. Larry Misuko, answer the question. No. Thank you. Uh, wanted to see me? Yes. One of the interns I was meant to interview is already here. Uh, I have to sort out these finances as soon as possible. Since you are the one who needs the interns more than anybody else, uh, I'd like you to conduct the interviews. Okay. It won't take much of your time. Right. Here's a CV. Once you're done, just ask Liz to send that to you. Okay. All right. Officer Nancy Dollar, you were on duty when uh, Larry Misuko and Peter Mulo brought the accused to the station. Yes. Larry Misuko claimed that the accused, Wilfred Wamato, had conned him. Please, describe the events of the day in relation to this case. Sure. Larry Misuko came in and told me that he had been conned by a man who pretended to be a woman, and that this man Sorry, this woman was his girlfriend, actually his fiancée, called Winnie. They had a relationship for five months and he was planning to marry her. He also told me that he had paid some dowry amounting to 100,000 Kenya shillings. And you arrested him immediately? Yes. Larry Misuko and Peter Mulo, his friend, had brought the man to the station. He was dressed as a woman flower dress, high heels. He even looked like a woman with makeup and all. How did you verify that it was not a woman, but a man? <laughs> Is there any other way? We accorded him a physical checkup. <laughs> she had male sexual organs. We even searched his house where we found female clothes, shoes, makeup, wigs, and bras with plastic breasts. Officer, are these the photos you took of uh, Winnie, Wilfred, when he came to the station? Yes, they are the ones. Your Honor, I'd like to submit these photos as evidence. Sure. Clark, you can have them marked. Officer, uh, Larry Misuko said that he had been conned uh, 100,000 shillings while investigations carried out on that report. We opened investigations and closed due to lack of evidence. Plus, there were no leads to the whereabouts of the two collaborators. There's nothing much the police headquarters could do. But as soon as new information comes in, we will reopen the investigations. Thank you. Your witness. You arrested a man and charged him with obtaining money under false pretense, with no proof that money exchanged hands. I made a judgment from my own observation. What, is it illegal to be a transvestite in this country? No. Interesting. From my observation, the only reason my client was arrested and charged was because he was dressed as a woman. We had all the reasons to believe he had committed a crime. Were you just jealous that he was more attractive than you? Objection! I'm only trying to establish that my client was arrested and charged because of his choice in attire, which is not a crime in Kenya. Nobody said it is a crime, but it is a crime to use false pretenses to enrich oneself while conning other people. Mm -hmm. Objection sustained. Nothing further, Your Honor. State your relationship to Larry Misuko. I'm his best friend. We've been friends since three years old when we were in kindergarten. For how long have you known Winnie, Wilfred? About four months. Basically from the moment Larry started dating her, him exclusively. Yes. 
And you never noticed anything odd about Winnie? Not at all. He tried to fool me too. And if uh, Larry had not been such a good friend, I would have tried to seduce Winnie. <laughs> when Larry called you, what did he tell you? He told me to pick him up, which I did, because he sounded distressed. He then told me what had just transpired. I then suggested that we pay a surprise visit on Winnie to find out exactly what was going on. Did he? Yes. We found her in the house, and uh, Larry was too dumbfounded on the parents' issue to talk. So I asked the questions. When I finally told her that we had been to her supposed parents' house in Buruburu, she attempted to escape. Push, shove, grab. And her dress was all out. No, and behold, it was all revealed. She had a man separate us. I couldn't believe it. So what happened next? We took our him, whichever, to the police station. Nothing further. Best of friends, huh? Yes. Were you aware of the day he visited his future in-laws and gave them a hundred thousand shillings? Yes. Why didn't you accompany him? Isn't it tradition for a man to go with a spokesperson to state his intentions to his in-laws? It was just a lunch. I was to accompany him for the next formalities after the introductions were made. So, how do you know that he went to visit the future in-laws that you keep mentioning? There was no proof and you weren't even there. I know because he told me. And because that week he had borrowed 50,000 Kenya shillings from me just to top up on whatever he had. So because he borrowed some money from you, he must have given 100,000 shillings to the mysterious elderly couple that no one knows about apart from Larry. Right? There is no evidence, so there is no crime. Tokara. Tokara sounds African American. Yeah. My mom's best friend was Tokara. She was American. That's how I got the name. You refer to the friend to your mom in the past tense. Why? Uh, she passed away. Leukemia. All in all, you have a beautiful name. Thanks. So why do you really want to work at uh, Mwako and Company Advocates? Well, um, while I was at the, at the university, I wanted to learn early enough how to argue cases in court. And so I attended several occasions where Mr. Mwako was uh, having sessions. I admired his knowledge of the law and his courage. And I knew if I wanted to become as good as him, I had to learn it directly from him. So that's why I'm here. Yep, and you will learn a lot from me too. Tell me, you've never seen me argue one of my cases in, in court? No, I can't remember. Though your face looks um, awfully familiar. I'm sure we must have met once or twice. Yeah, I was thinking the same too. Your face is... Uh... Anyway, that's for another time. Allow me to bust your bubble. Mr. Mwako works in most of his cases with me. So you may not have the opportunity to be his protege as you had uh, early envisioned. For as long as I'm nurtured in this farm, I'm more than delighted. 
You know, most interns, when they come here, they are attached to me. And that's why I'm the one conducting the interview, not Mr. Mwako. Mm. Good grades. Thanks. Wilfred, how long have you been a crossdresser? <clears throat> For as long as I can remember. I am the last born in a family of six, and I'm the only boy. My sisters used to dress me up as a girl when I was growing up, and uh, I grew up liking it. So here I am, an adult and a crossdresser. So you get dressed, leave the house, and no one recognizes you. That's the fun of it, looking totally different. And that's how you met Larry? On one of your dress-up days? Yes. We met at an expo and uh, he was attracted to the cross-dresser, not me. I decided to play along on that day and uh, the two consecutive dates that we had. On the third date I decided to, to confess it was pretty much obvious I was not a woman. And uh, he had suspected this after we had a one-on-one. -on -one. Women think and communicate differently from men. Can't fake that easily. That's what he said. So you're saying he knew you were a man, not a woman? Yes, he knew. It was out there in the open. And he even encouraged me to, to dress up and have my fun when I wanted to. What about on holidays, all those trips to the coast? Did you go as Wilfred or did you go as Winnie? Both, both. Uh, there were occasions I went as Wilfred and others as uh, Winnie. That's the two rooms. This, these trips, we went to these trips as friends. Eh? Larry and I were buddies, or so I thought. What do you mean? After the Easter trip, Larry began making advances on me. By advances, you mean sexual advances? Yes. Liar! Liar! You stinking liar! Larry Michiko, sit down and shut up. He's destroying me! I said sit down and hush it. Mr. Mona, proceed. Thank you. You chose to ignore the advances. They did not seem genuine. And I never imagined Larry being gay. I am a cross-dresser, but I enjoy and love the feel of a woman. Just like God intended it to be. After some time, Larry, his advances became more aggressive. He would even insist on staying at my house. Tell this court about that one particular night. We got home late and drunk from the bar. <clears throat> I went straight to bed, and so did he. After about an hour or so, he sneaked into my room, entered my bed, and tried to seduce me. No! 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 Order! You lying order, bastard! Order! Order! Order in my courtroom! This is not happening to me. Nightmare! Nightmare! Will you keep it zipped or do I send you in a cell where you can go and do all your ranting? Being locked up in a cell is better than this. Can you shut up or leave? It will not happen again. It better not. Mr. Amato, please go on. I was shocked. He apologized profusely and uh, blamed it on the alcohol. He promised it will never happen again. I forgave him. Two weeks later, he pulled the same move on me. I was forced to break up our friendship because it was obvious what he wanted and I could not deliver on it. A week later, he storms into my, my house with his friend Peter. They dragged me to the police station and accused me of conning him. Did he ever pay your rent? No. Did he ever pay for any of your bills? No. 
in fact, I was spending more on him than he was on me. Like, uh, the, the cost trips, they were mostly on me. It was only the Easter, Easter trip that we split the expenses 50-50. Did he give you a hundred thousand shillings? No, I am innocent. I have done nothing wrong. The only crime that I have committed is cross-dressing. Which isn't a crime. You mentioned that Larry Misuko knew you were a cross-dresser. Yes. And uh, during your trips to Mombasa, you had gone uh, both as Winnie and Wilfred yes. on separate occasions. Yes. We have pictures of you as Winnie with Larry Misuko in beaches, restaurants, bars. But none of you as Wilfred. Isn't that odd? I'm not so much into taking photos. Really? That's strange. Larry's camera had more than 300 photos of you. We only selected a few for this court. And none, like I said, portrayed you as Wilfred. Do you have evidence that Larry knew you were a man? We discussed it. So the answer is no? Yes, I have no evidence. So I'm right to assume that Larry knew you as Winnie? He knew. So you say, but you cannot prove it. When you met Larry, you were Winnie. Is that right? Yes. So he was attracted to Winnie? I think so. Therefore he was heterosexual. So when did he become gay? Maybe he swings both ways. How, how am I supposed to know? All I know is that he sneaked into my bed and tried to seduce me. Was he seducing Winnie or Wilfred? Wilfred. He knew I am a man. So you say. What do you do for a living? I sell cars. I buy and sell cars. Buy them from Japan and sell them here. Do you operate under a company name? I don't have a registered company. I transact as an individual. On average, how much money do you make out of a car sale? Average 100,000. But it, it, it ranges from 50 to 200,000, depending on the negotiations and the car. And on average, how many cars do you sell in a month? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? I'm looking at his finances. Following the money. Overrule. I will allow it. On average, how many cars in a month? Three to four cars uh, per month. End of year is usually a peak. Can go up to six cars. So you make an average monthly income of about 300 to 400,000. Yes. I'm looking at your bank statement here. I'm looking at the past six months. The transactions that I'm seeing are deposits of 20,000, 30,000, there is a 15,000 and 60,000 and 80,000 shillings after Larry visited your supposed, rather, Winnie's supposed parents. Can you tell this court where the 80,000 originated from? I sold a car. Which you bought and sold? I operate three different accounts and uh, the one that you're looking at right now is my entertainment account and that's where I put my uh, drinking and holiday money. Can you provide us with the copies of 
the import documents and logbook transfer. Are you in a position to give us the details of all these transactions? Are you able to give us the details? <coughs> Yes, could you come to our offices tomorrow at 9 in the morning? Yes, for the internship position. Thank you. How did it go? Better than I expected. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Prosecution, closing statement. Yes, my lord. Shall we? <sighs> the art of uh, obtaining money from unsuspecting people has evolved and is evolving. Con men have become more and more sophisticated. It's not about his peculiar habit, your honor. We all have our dark spots. If you found out that I have a fetish for inflatable dolls, you'll be surprised, wouldn't you? But there are men who enjoy doing it. They have fun doing it. There are men who have fun wearing women's undergarments. His cross-dressing? I don't care about that. After all, he had his fun doing it. And as my Learned friend so aptly put it, it's not a crime. But what I care about is when this habit, as a custodian of, of law and order, is when these habits are used to exploit innocent citizens. Larry Misuko is just an innocent victim. He fell in love. He took advantage of him. He even went as far as making a proposition. His fake fiancé colluded with two other con people who posed as his parents and obtained a hundred thousand shillings from him. His days as a con man are over. Transvestism, commonly referred to as cross-dressing, is often associated with homosexuality. It is assumed that a man is gay if he dresses like a woman. And that was the case between Larry Misuko and Wilfred Wamato. The two met when Wilfred was going through exploring his feminine side. He was dressed as a woman. Larry saw through the dressing and instantly pursued him unaware that he was not a homosexual. But Larry thought that he was a homosexual and thought he could come out of the closet with him. Out of bitterness, resentment, embarrassment, Larry accused Wilfred of conning him. He accused Wilfred of pretending to be a woman. He was doing all this to protect his sexual preference just in case it came out. Wilfred is the one who was conned here. Wilfred is innocent. All he did was simply get involved with the wrong people who made the wrong impressions about him. Okay, today being the 8th, I will deliver my judgment on the 15th. This court is adjourned. Got a minute? 
How did the interview go? Well, I think we have an intern. Tokara seems the right person for us here. She's got the right attitude and the right brains to go with it. Very well. Tokara it is. Is she free to begin? Yeah, she's more than here to start. Hand it over to Liz. She'll know what to do. Let me guess, she's um, hired. He's hot. <laughs> Smoking hot, I'm telling you. Not exactly the word I was going for, but since hot is the word in operation, let's go with hot. <laughs> what happened to the changed man who was begging his wife on the phone to take him back? Please, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with admiring beauty, appreciating it. Nothing totally. You imagining your hands all over her? has nothing to do with appreciation. More like raw, unchecked lust, if you ask me. <laughs> you know, for a minute there, I actually thought you'd changed. I have. And I say it, and I'll tell you again, there's nothing wrong with admiring beauty and appreciating it. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, anyway, Marco said you know what to do. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? I hope you're smarter. I expect no outburst of any nature as I render my judgment. In the matter of the Republic versus Wilfred Wamato, I have had a careful examination of the evidence and reviewed the testimonies. I am convinced that Larry Misuko was not aware that Wilfred and Winnie were one and the same person. Winnie was indeed Wilfred. What transpired between the two was on the basis that the accused was a woman. Wilfred, disguised as Winnie, the accused, managed to obtain money and favors from the complainant on the basis of false pretenses. Wilfred Wamato, I hereby find you guilty of the offense of obtaining money under false pretenses and sentence you to three years in prison. You have the right to appeal within 30 days. Your Honor. Next case, please. Uh, Your Honor, what about my money? Now, that is an issue that will be addressed by the civil court. Get a lawyer to advise you accordingly. Elsie, please help me. Elsie, please. Save me. Help me. We will appeal. I promise. Help me. You have to help me.